Namaste, namaste, and welcome to this uh, warm up short practice uh, for sort of moving through the body. And it's my Monday morning warm up before class. Uh, so we're going to start in a seated position. We're going to do some full blade, uh, floor based limbering um, because today in class we're going to be working with some sun salutations. So moving through all areas of the spine. And we're going to start just by sitting, drawing ourselves really tall, allowing the arms to rest wherever is comfortable, maybe closing the eyes or gazing gently downward. And just taking a moment to check in with your body, feeling all the things that you're feeling in this moment. And allowing a quick note of the areas of your body that perhaps need a little bit of compassion with your practice, a little bit of kindness. Taking this opportunity to step away from everything that's going on around you. Just carving out a little time and space for your personal practice. as you draw your awareness to your breath and perhaps gently deepen your breath, notice if you're able to soften some of the holding or stiffness or tension that you've brought into this moment. Whenever you're ready, you can bring the palms together at the center of the chest, lift the chest and take your chin towards your chest. Feeling that gentle length and stretch perhaps down the back of the body and smiling to yourself, bringing your head upright, releasing the hands, opening the eyes. So let's get cracking. We're gonna start with a little gentle stirring of the spine, just rolling in one direction making circles as if you were drawing circles with the crown of the head on the ceiling and allowing that motion to massage a little bit the, into the hips and the legs and the buttocks and also begin to move the spine, perhaps the shoulders as this movement becomes a little freer as you create space, you might move a little bit more dynamically, perhaps keeping a little bit of gentle movement through the neck as well. Nothing rigid, the shoulders nicely involved. Whenever you're ready, you can go the opposite way. I like to start small again, going in the opposite way, just to feel my way into the movement. And then just seeing if there's a little bit more space to move into, you can get that sense of something a bit more dynamic with the upper body. And maybe doing two more like this, not forgetting the head and the neck. Sometimes I do when I'm thinking, I forget to move the head and the neck. And then coming back to sitting upright, I'm going to reach the arms nice and wide and just allow a little gentle side to side movement. So here, if your opposite hip tries to follow you as you go to the right, the left hip peeling off the floor, that's okay. Don't force your body to, to hold it in one place. A little bit of movement is absolutely fine, particularly as we're working to find those spaces, beginning to explore our range of movement. With the underneath arm, you want to keep the shoulder softening down, the elbow nice and soft, so the arm is supported but buoyant. And then the next time you come down on the left side, just reaching the right arm over and exploring a little deeper into that side stretch. And here, now if you want to stretch the right hip away from the right hand, that's, that's okay, you can explore into that space. When you've reached the side bend that feels good to you, nice softening down shoulders long in the neck, you can gently roll the right shoulder backwards and forwards, just spiraling through the right side of the body. There's no exact 
uh, alignment here. So just exploring how it feels in your body. And the next time your right arm comes forward, maybe just walking the hands to the front of the body. Now here we can have the arms nice and wide so we can roll the shoulders down the back and open the chest and lifting in the belly with this slight forward lean and do a little sway of the hips from side to side, as not the hips, of the chest from side to side. And then you might feel that that lengthened uh, sensation around the buttocks and the hips goes to different places as you as you move and when you're ready you can come all the way up into an upright position just take a moment to feel the effect of your practice and then we're going to change the way that our legs are so uh, I've got my left in front of my right and I'm going to change left the right in front of left if you're choosing an alternative position for these uh, practices then don't worry we just do it the same again on the other side so sitting really tall we're going to do a little bit of stirring and this time we're going to try and use the chest as well so we get this sense of opening and releasing through the upper back releasing through the chest a little light uh, lifting in the belly muscles just to support and when you're ready going in the opposite direction and when we work cross-legged, it is different. The sensation is slightly different in the body, depending on whether the right or left leg is in front. It's important for balance in your body to work with both, although one will probably be more comfortable than the other. When you're ready, coming back to sitting upright, sitting really nice and tall, reaching the arms away from the body and doing a little side bending. Side bending is one of my favorite things to do. It's a movement we don't do very much in life. Um, we do much more forward bending, backward bending, twisting. But so side bending has this sort of feeling of really releasing space, of creating uh, ease where there perhaps wasn't ease. Next time your arm comes down on your right side, just letting the right arm be really supportive as you reach the left fingers away from the left hip keeping the shoulders, drawing down the back. And then when you're in your side bend that feels good, this bottom arm nice and buoyant and supportive, rolling the left shoulder backwards to open the chest, rolling the left shoulder forwards to open the upper back. And then spiraling backwards and forwards, doing with your head what feels good for your neck, lifting in the belly muscles, just really oh, releasing all the bits and pieces from the left side of the body. And then when you're ready, you can reach your left arm all the way over and just pad your fingers around to the front. Again, rolling the shoulders back and down to open the chest as if you were doing a cobra pose with your upper body. A lift in the belly muscles, gliding perhaps the elbows a little closer to the body gentle sway of the chest from side to side and keeping that sense of open through the chest broad through the tops of the shoulders and then if you wish to you can fold a little bit further forward maybe for a moment before coming up to sitting again and just noticing how that feels in the body it feels fantastic to me i hope it feels really good to you as well so from here, we're going to move into a little bit of cat-cow. So we're going to come onto our hands and knees. And we just want to establish a really nice wide fingered base. Um, knees wherever is comfortable for your hips. Press the tops of the feet down and then just begin to scoop the belly and the pelvic floor up and in. From here, we're inhaling as we glide the shoulder blades down the back and open the chest and exhaling, rounding through the spine, chin to chest. Inhaling forward. You can reverse your breath if it feels more natural to so exhale forward and inhale back, exhaling back. And just keep pressing into the tops of the feet, not really firmly, but just a little to really activate the legs. So you're moving from your hips as well. A little touch of softness in the elbows, just beginning to explore the feelings down the back of the body. 
On this next few, on these next few rounds, we're going to start from the base of the spine. So rolling the hips first and the base of the spine and the pelvis, that movement coming up the spine, then gliding the shoulder blades down and lifting the chin last. And then rounding from the base of the spine, tucking the tailbone under, scooping the belly in, rounding through the upper back, chin to chest last. So coming forward from the base of the spine, you might want to just allow your breath to find its natural rhythm as you do this, or you can uh, do a couple of breaths in each direction. Rounding from the base of the spine, curling under, pressing the mat away from you, pressing into the tops of the feet, lifting in the belly muscles. Let's do one more like that. Rounding from, sorry, opening from the base of the spine, Finding the belly open, the chest open, the throat open, and then rounding under, tucking the tailbone, scooping the belly in, lifting the back of the ribs, chin to chest. And then just taking a moment to sit back on your heels or perhaps uh, kneel up if you prefer, prefer not to kneel back on your heels and just roll through the wrists a couple of times. Very good. Super stuff. And then we're going to come back to our hands and knees, but we're going to do tiger pose. So we're drawing the knees towards each other. They don't have to touch, but so the knee that gets left on the floor is a little bit more supportive in the center of the body. Again, with the fingers nicely spread, let's start with the right leg first. We're going to inhale the right heel up behind the body and then exhale, rounding through the spine, chin to chest, heel to buttock. And then press through the heel, inhaling, lifting behind the body, gliding the shoulder blades down to open the chest, but lifting in the belly muscles. Exhale as you round under, heel to buttock. That's the key thing. Inhaling forwards. Exhaling as you round, scooping the belly in, lifting the heel as high as you can. Inhaling. Open the chest. Exhaling, rounding through the spine. Very good, let's place that knee down, swap sides. I'm gonna to come to neutral and then start with the left heel, inhaling as you open the chest, the front of the body, look forward. Exhaling, rounding through the spine, knee to chest, heel to buttock. Inhaling, nice and firm in the fingertips. Exhaling, rounding through the spine, scooping the belly and lifting the heel as high as you can. Inhaling. And exhaling. Inhaling. And exhaling. And then finish by dropping both knees to the mat. We're going to take the knees nice and wide. Let the heel hips come back to the heels and walk the fingertips forward a little. So you have this nice extended child's pose position. You can even turn the palms upwards or inwards if that just helps you to get a little bit of breadth across the top of the shoulders and a rest for the wrists. Here, if you like, you can gently weigh, wiggle your hips from side to side. I quite like that massage of the thigh bones in the hip sockets, little release for the low back. And then in the center, in a restful position, just taking a few deeper breaths. Try to let go of effort and tension across the shoulders, the face, the chest. And when you're ready, you can walk your hands in towards you, come to more of an upright position, just kneeling back on your heels for a moment, rolling through your wrists. So the final thing I'd like to practice today before coming to class is a gait, is um, a uh, sort of gate pose. It's like a variation of cat, really. Um, so I'm going to do this slightly sideways on. Um, so coming onto your hands and knees, but stepping the right leg out to the right side. And I hope that's up on the camera enough. Yes, lovely. Um, so here we're going to press into the left foot. We're still pressing into the fingertips, firming in the belly. And then we are going to lift the right arm up and take that right shoulder as far back as feels comfortable and then slide the right hand between the left 
hand and knee, taking the shoulders towards the floor. So softening the left elbow a little. Inhaling as you open up. And we're trying to draw that right shoulder blade right round the body. So you can open beyond just upright. You can really open that right hand behind the body, even touch the wall behind you if you like. And then as you exhale, slide the back of the right hand underneath the body. One more time, inhaling. And exhaling. And then coming back to the center, just going to bring the right knee back underneath the body. Take a moment here to do a little sassy cat. So the sides of the body, swinging the hips and the shoulders from side to side, not up and down. And then we're stepping the left foot out to the left side. Should probably come back this way so you can see a little bit better. Left foot out to the left side and really firming the right foot into the floor, lifting the left arm up and drawing the back of the shoulder behind the body as much as feels comfortable, really keeping strong through the right hand, right leg, and then sliding the left hand underneath the body, soft bend in that right elbow to, try to take the left shoulder towards the floor. It doesn't need to touch. Inhaling, pressing into the legs, firming the buttocks, lifting in the belly. Exhaling, sliding the back of the right, left hand even <laughs> underneath the body. Wonderful stuff. One more. Inhaling, opening. Exhaling, just threading the needle underneath the body. And then we're going to come back to center. Bring the left knee back into center as well. Give yourself a little hula hooping cat. So this is where we use the spine like a skipping rope between the shoulders and the pelvis and just make barrel circular movements. I don't know how better to explain that. But anyway, hopefully it's obvious. Um, especially if you've done work with me before. And then well, after we've done that little wiggle out, we're going to take a downward facing dog, just peeling the knees up, keeping the knees nice and bent, finding your weight into your heels and lengthening the legs. In our downward dog, we just want to keep the neck nice and relaxed so we can gently turn the head from side to side. Try not to let your head come down below your shoulders or your arms. Keep it in line with the arms or slightly above if that is where your shoulders are open to. There are variations where we do on purpose take the head between the hands, but uh, probably not for the first down dog of the day. Little paddling of the heels from side to side, gentle lifting of the belly, still pressing into the fingertips. And then if, you like, want, like, if you'd like to, you can take your knees, your feet nice and wide, keep your knees nice and soft and just wiggle the hips from side to side. Maybe you wiggle a bit through the shoulders as well. Let like the back of the neck relax. Press really firmly into the fingertips. And then when you're ready, you can come all the way down, perhaps for a child's pose with the knees closer together, further apart if it suits you, child's pose of, child's pose of your choice. I'm going to relax my arms back to my ankles and just take a few deeper breaths here, releasing all the effort, particularly across the belly muscles and the shoulders. Maybe sighing with the breath to let go of any uh, emotional things that have come up. When you feel like your breath has returned to normal and you feel like you've been able to counterpose all of those effects, coming back up into an upright position, it could be sitting or kneeling, and just taking a moment in stillness to observe the effect of your practice. So hopefully you feel wriggled, moved, energized, you feel space in your body that wasn't, that wasn't there before, and you feel that you've been able to release some of your uh, habitual tension. Um, and now you're ready either for uh, practice, uh, a fuller practice or a little relaxation or a little breath work, whatever you choose to do with the rest of your day. I hope it is amazing. Namaste.